What's up guys, today we'll be talking about the MSI Modern 14. It's a low to mid-range Ultrabook that I would say competes with the Asus Zenbooks in terms of portability and price. This thing starts at $750 for the base model, or you can spec it up with the MX150 for $900. The model that I'm reviewing is the base model, but there shouldn't be any difference aside from graphics performance. The build quality is good, a little bit of flex on the screen assembly and the keyboard deck bends a little bit near the center, but it's built quite well overall and doesn't feel cheap to me. Hinge tension is good, maybe a tad bit tight, but because of the way the hinge is designed, the screen does have quite a bit of screen wobble. It also comes in dark gray or a silver color, both with a brushed aluminum texture. The grill up top above the keyboard is not for the speakers. MSI has always had downward firing speakers and this is no exception. The top grill is actually used for air intake for the cooling and the speakers sound terrible. They're bottom firing and even just for watching YouTube videos, they sound quiet, hollow and it's almost as if I'm recording the speakers off of a $200 smartphone off of another $200 smartphone and playing that back through its speakers. Even the HP Pavilion gaming laptop for 800 bucks has dramatically better speakers than this. Like, those actually sound good. These do not. It's running a 14 inch 1080p panel with excellent color accuracy. Contrast isn't amazing, 770 to 1 with 1000 to 1 being good. It's also not particularly bright. It's fine for indoors, but the moment you're in a space that's well lit, the screen just looks dim and I wish it was brighter at times. For 750 bucks, it's a good panel and nothing really to complain about, but if you're a content creator looking at the more expensive models, I think there are other laptops that have really nice screens for content creation, like the last gen Surface Laptop 2 and the XPS 13, just without the MX150, if that matters to you. The keyboard isn't great for ergonomics, for comfort, accuracy, and typing speed. The key travel is very short, I would guess around a millimeter or less of key travel, very similar to MacBook Pros, but the problem here is that it's not very tactile. The switches feel spongy, and it makes it harder for me to tell when I've activated a key. The layout is fine, except the number row is shifted slightly to the left, so the tilde key is like half width but you'll get used to it after a few days of use. The thing that I don't like about this keyboard is that the function row is basically empty. There's no volume, no backlight, no brightness, media, nothing. They're all scattered around the keyboard, or actually around the arrow keys, and it's just bad design because it forces you to always hold down the FN key to access those secondary functions, whereas with the function row, you can set it to always use the secondary functions. One thing that I'd like to note is that the butterfly switches on the 2017 MacBook Pros in particular also had very shallow key travel, but they were very tactile and that allowed me to type at 95 to 100 words per minute with excellent accuracy. This thing just doesn't allow me to type at fast speeds with good accuracy, and that's ultimately why I think it's a bad keyboard. The trackpad is plastic, it's not smooth, the tracking isn't very accurate, the acceleration curve is all sorts of crazy, and even highlighting text requires me to slow down because once you start holding the trackpad down, the sticky surface just makes the cursor go crazy because your finger is skipping all over the place. It's also very small and in general a poor trackpad. The Zenbooks also aren't great. I mean, they're both $750 laptops, but at least the Zenbooks are usable. This thing is not really usable. So to the good part, port selection is actually really good. On the left is your power, HDMI, USB-C, headphone jack. On the right are two USB-A's, a second USB-C port. Both do not support Thunderbolt 3, but it's a $750 laptop, so I wouldn't expect it to have it anyway. And a full-size SD slot. On the bottom, you'll notice that there's a factory seal sticker and this will void your warranty if you pierce into it to unscrew the screw beneath to take the bottom panel off. They are one of very few laptop manufacturers that I've seen that still does this, along with Gigabyte. The SSD is a decently fast NVMe drive. It's running single channel memory with the eight gigabyte configuration and for some reason does not support Wi-Fi 6 despite running Intel's 10th generation CPUs. There's a 51 watt hour battery inside that's getting me around 8 hours of battery life with light use. I'm not a big fan of the barrel plug charger they continue to use. I mean, that's not too big of a deal, 
But the thing that really bugs me is that neither of the USB-C ports supports charging, so you don't have the flexibility that you would with other laptops. I had high hopes for this thing given how much I liked the PS63 Modern, but it's just not a good Ultrabook. I would assume that the Prestige 14 is going to be a much better laptop overall. It seems to be much closer to the PS63, but at this price point, at $750, I would steer you towards the ASUS ZenBooks. I haven't tried a whole lot of Ultrabooks at this price point. There might be some other really good options from Acer or Lenovo, but I have purchased three ZenBooks before, and I think they're pretty good laptops for the price. And that is the end of this video. Any requests for laptop reviews, you can leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.